My journey began when I noticed a little bump on my shoulder. Aliza was born and it was for sure the most traumatic birth that I had. They rushed her to the uh, ICU. The doctor ordered that we get transported to a hospital with a helicopter and I said, for pneumonia? Like, what's going on here? And as the doctor is talking to me, I notice on her notes, it said, R lung tumor. My parents told me I was diagnosed with Ewing sarcoma. We just could not believe it. We were in shock. We all were because my sister Nishama was diagnosed with rhabdomyosarcoma 11 years ago. It really seems pretty crazy because the odds are just not there. Wow, here we go again. The doctor came to us and he said, that it was the worst possible diagnosis. They gave her a diagnosis of trisomy 18. And the very first thing they said is, don't Google it because it's pretty horrific. When you looked it up, I said, not compatible with life. The cardiologist, when he first saw Obi, he's like, listen, I'm not gonna lie. Like, you know, I'm a little concerned with the heart. It's one thing when you hear the word cancer or tumor. It's another when you hear that it's covering the entire lung and it's touching the heart. And then the doctors say it's too dangerous to even perform surgery because he might not come back from a surgery like this. And he's a two-year-old. How do you live with a child that you're afraid that they're not going to make it? I just felt, I, I don't think I can do this. How am I going to take care of this baby? That's how it was. And in the middle of the chaos, High Lifeline, was incredible. I didn't even know an organization like this exists. I would have never thought in a million years we'd be in this situation, let alone to come across such beautiful people like this. We kind of felt lucky in a way that we had teams in place. Dr. Wexler at Sloan Kettering and the incredible pediatric sarcoma team. And we had High Lifeline who we connected with instantaneously again and, and that was a tremendous comfort for us. When we were there in the ICU, they brought toys for OB and even an insurance question. Do you need transportation? Do you have a car? Do you need anyone to, to help you with your daughter? Like, how about you can give your mom a little break? So I said, we might need a, 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 a nanny or a babysitter. High Lifeline, they managed to get donations to help us out even with a nanny. It's things like that, that they don't have to do that. And they go over and beyond for you on things that you don't, you don't, you might not even think about. It's just incredible. I can't even, I don't even know, I mean, who are these people? It's, 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 it's amazing. Our High Lifeline case manager somehow knew every time that we were in the hospital and they were just there and right. just with anything that I needed. Yeah, it's the, it's the personal attention to detail. Just awesome people doing incredibly uh, you know, kind and generous things. You know, every cancer patient is a hero. And to know that there's this sort of army of love surrounding us is extraordinary. I couldn't survive something like that. No adult could, but he did, he's two years old. Obi is our hero. They were just there for us for every step. And when you have that support system, things that seem impossible, are suddenly possible and not just possible. You're just not alone. Um, it was a rough time, very, very rough time. I'm glad to say it was a rough time because it's not rough anymore, thank God. They really have just supported me with so much love and care and support in incredible ways. And everyone there is just, is a hero. They all have a goal in mind, which is to help kids fighting illness feel loved.